Hi, this is Carl James Lankford, and this is one of those rare video logs that I comment about a television program, a television series actually. And um, it's not that I watch television a lot because I'm always busy uh, with the archaeology or the acting and um, the children. And uh, I've been intrigued by the series The Detectorists. Um, I really liked the first series and um, I'm not sure about the second series, but the third series has turned out to be something very, very, very different. I, I don't approve of metal detecting. Um, I don't think there's any need for metal detecting at all. Uh, people going out metal detecting, um, finding things in fields, uh, taking them to museums, expecting museums to store them, pay out money. Most metal detecting enthusiasts do metal detecting for financial gain, from my experience. Very few actually do it genuinely. Um, and for those that do it genuinely, um well an apology there um but generally it's from me as criticism but the series detectorists actually say it as it is and the third series um is very very interesting um and it's the way they're portraying archaeologists um and in episode one it was building up to the archaeological um excavation where Mackenzie uh, Crook was um, excavating on um, as an archaeologist in the series and plus a metal detect enthusiast um, he was seeing his manager was um, it was almost indicating his, his archaeological manager the experienced top class ar archaeologist was actually up to some up, up to no good and um, saying to my partner Michelle maybe it's the usual thing in archaeology that the archaeologists are covering up the archaeology so the developers can get on with their um, uh, projects and uh, I found this very much with the Glamorgan and Gwent Archaeological Trust uh, where they cover up um, archaeological discoveries in Monmouth in favour of the uh, developer uh, Merthyr Devon Church in, in near Barry, um, Sully Village and so on and so on it's a very corrupt organisation the Glamorgan and Gwent Archaeological Trust um, and uh, it's portraying an organisation like that and an archaeological manager in the Detectorists and in episode two, what we do see is um, Mackenzie Crook actually finds uh, a Roman mosaic and the man and he calls the manager over. He, um, Mackenzie takes some photographs with his mobile phone um, and uh, the manager indicates that he's um, over the moon with this find. But as some officials come up close, Mackenzie was asked to cover up the findings of a mosaic. Um, and it's probably because the, um, the archaeologists um, hand in glove with the developers. They're not meant to find anything as they weren't meant to find anything in episode uh, one um, of series three. Um, and uh, give the bottom dollar that in episode three, um, the mosaic will be flitted away. It will never have been there. Um, and the developers can get on with their development. Um, it's strange that the uh, Mackenzie, when he was finding um, a Roman wall um, in episode one, he was told by the manager that it wasn't a wall and to excavate somewhere else. So this is uh, endemic in archaeology, the corruption in archaeology, something that I found with um, the discovery of human bones at Monk Nash, which was also uh, pushed brushed under the carpet by the Glamorgan and Grant Archaeological Trust on national television. Um, so this um, series really portrays um, negative archaeology and archaeologists up to no good. They may be qualified archaeologists, uh, but they're certainly bent and as, as corrupt uh, as some of the archaeologists I've come across in the field. Uh, many names I could come out with in this recording, uh, but I'm not going to. But the Glamorgan and Grant Archaeological Trust is as bent as any archaeological organisation and all their archaeologists um, in this country. Um, there are some good archaeologists out there. I've worked with many good archaeologists at University of Highlands and Islands. Uh, they are genuine archaeologists really wishing to um, portray archaeology in a good light. And they're very good archaeologists there, but many are very bent. Um, and as for metal detect enthusiasts, the metal detect enthusiasts come up better uh, than the archaeologists in the series. Um, but there's one group um, known as the terra firma. Um, and the terra firma archaeologists were portraying something else that I've seen in metal detecting, where metal detect enthusiasts to get the best prizes at, at rallies um, and to get on national media, buy artifacts from the internet, eBay. Um, spike them on archaeological sites, find the archaeological finds, 
um, take them to the portable antiquity scheme, get some kind of financial reward, get their names in the newspaper, get their names on the site's monuments record, um, and those finds were never ever found in the field in the first place, bought off the internet, completely bent metal detecting. Um, but I feel that um, the archaeologists come off worse, worse uh, than the metal detect enthusiasts in this series. Um, and again, um, apologies for the very straight um, and very bona fide archaeologists out there. And apologise to um, the few, but they do exist, metal detect enthusiasts out there who are trying to do something um, to preserve and to uh, dictate the archaeological record in the country. I know this is going to stir people. Let's have loads of thumbs down. This is going to really um, upset people out there. But then again, I don't care anymore. Um, archaeology has to be done properly. Metal detecting has to be done properly. And if it's, if it's done improperly, let's expose those complete arseholes in archaeology, like the Glamorgan and Grant Archaeological Trust, and like those metal detect enthusiasts. They're up to no good. Thank you very much.